Hello class. We are now in module three. We are going to discuss here univariate data, particularly descriptive analysis using measures of central tendency. Now, what does univariate mean? It's from two words, uni and variate. Uni means single, while well, variate is the root word for variable or vary. Uh, we already know what a variable is. And here we're going to learn the presentation and analysis of one variable. It is actually the simplest form of quantitative analysis when you're going to present and analyze only a single variable. In presenting the data, it can be done to both a small and large sample. The small sample will be those that are 30 and below, wherein you can obtain the frequency count. For the large sample, it's over 30 cases or respondents, and you can obtain both the frequency and the percentage. A frequency distribution is a description of the number of times that the various attributes of a variable are observed in a sample. Like in your plan survey, how many times have you observed the age 20, for example? Or how many times have you observed uh, the sex female in all of those cases that you have included? Now, it can be presented in a tabular form or in graph form. If with frequency only, so for those below 30 cases, if a table look like this, you can give it a title on top of the table, table one, for example, frequency distribution, respondents, civil status. You include the location and you include the year it was conducted. So the total is below 20. If there are more than 30 cases, so you can have here another column to include the percentage and the title will be frequency and percentage distribution. Now in the case of a graph, if for example, it's more than 30 cases, in here, um, there are 28 females, that's 47%. In a pie graph, there are 32 males, 53%. And the title of that graph will be below the figure. Frequency and percentage distribution. And you include the location and when it was conducted. Now, the small sample, you already know what that is, composed of 30 or fewer pieces of data. Example, in the raw pieces of data collected in our research are six, three, eight, three, and five. A data set this is small, a listing is often all that is necessary to present the results. Now, the measures of central tendency, this, this is A, labeled A, because next to this will be the measures of dispersion, B. That will be B, and that will be in another uh, video lecture. There are five measures of central tendency, the mean, the median, the mode, mid-range, and mid-quartile. The mean, or X-bar, is the average of a set of numbers. So just add all the pieces of data together and divide by the number of pieces of data or N represented by the symbol N. So each data is X. So if there are five of them, so X1, X2, X3, X4, X5, you total all of them together, summation of X and divide by N. That's the formula. Okay, so for the given data, six, three, 
835. All you need to do is just add all of those, uh, obtain the total and divide by the number of cases, which is, there are only five. So the total of this is 25, then divide by five. And by just looking at it, because it's so small a number, you know that the mean is five by just looking at these numbers. Now, what about your clan survey? Because you have a lot of entries there. Some of you have 50 cases, 60 cases. So it's a different story. And you have to use now, not, your, not just your eyes, but you will, you will use the calculator for hundreds of cases. For example, in a real research, you are going to use Excel or is PSS. Okay. The mean may not provide an accurate measure when there are few extreme values in the data set. For example, the variable age within 20 to 30 years old, but there are two or even one whose age is 60 years old. The mean tends to be of higher value because of the pool of 60. So you'd think that because the mean is higher, the people are older, but no, it's just because of 160 years old. Although most people are in ages 20 to 30 years old. So you see, the same misleading result could occur for income when there is one with 60,000, while the rest have only within 20 to 30,000. So it's not that accurate if there is um, extreme value in a data set. In this case, it will be better to obtain the median value as well and place both in the research report. So together, the two values provide better description of the data's central tendency. So the median is just the middle number when pieces of data are ranked in order according to size. From our given data set, the ranked data become, so meaning you are going to arrange your data now from smallest to highest and then you are going to look for the middle uh, piece of data, which, because there are only five, it's easy for you to see that the middle data here is five. But what about your um, clan survey, which has 50? Well, you can also see it maybe after you arrange it from lowest to highest. But what about if there are hundreds? So in that case, Excel is very helpful and very easy. So that's the median. The mode is that value which occurs most frequently. So for this given data, 63835, the mode in this data set is 3. Now, if there is no repeated number, then the mode is, there's no mode. If in a sample 3, 3, 4, 5, 5, and 7, both 3 and 5 appear an equal number of times, therefore, there is no one value that appears most often. This sample has no mode as well. Mid-range is a number exactly midway between the data set and obtained by averaging the low and high scores. So for the given data set again, 63835, you are going to have the lowest three added to the highest eight, divide by two, divide by the two, so 11 over 2, that is 5.5. That is now the mid range. So the mid quartile is a numerical value midway between the two quartiles and obtained by averaging the two quartiles. So if each of the quartile is equal to 25, that is so very easy because you just think of 100 and divide it into four. So each quarter has 25 or just consider the the money, one peso, there are four, 25 on it. So the mid quartile Q1 plus Q3 divided by two. So Q1, because it is of equal parts, so it's very easy to obtain. Okay. So that ends our measures of central tendency. Next will be discussed in another video lecture is the measure of dispersion.